Hello, my friend, and welcome to Something For Everybody. My name is Aaron Mashpitz, and today is a solo episode of the podcast where I'm discussing sports parents, do's and don'ts. So let's jump right in, and we're going to start with the don'ts. So number one, don't turn the car ride into a coffin. Avoid debriefing your child's performance on the car ride home. Allow them time to process and come to you when they're ready. Really listen to that. Do not turn the car ride home into a coffin, especially after a loss or a hard game or anything of that nature. Do not do that. That is the number one reason that our kids will stop playing youth sports. It's from that, that hard car ride home. So just avoid debriefing your child's performance on the car ride home. Just allow them to process. And if they want to come to you during the car ride home, they will. But you are not attacking them about their performance or anything that happened in the game. You're not discussing how bad their coaches are. You're not talking about any of that stuff. You're not. You're not turning the car ride home into a coffin. Really hear that. And if you do one thing, or if you don't do one thing from either side of this sports parents do's and don'ts, take this one. The number one thing we can say to our kid when they get into the car or we talk to them after the game is it's so simple yet so powerful. All you have to say is, wow, I loved watching you play today. That's it. The conversation's over, especially if they're 8, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, even 13 years old. There doesn't need to be a full post-game debrief like you're some... Um, you know, division one program, you simply just look your child in the eye and you tell them, I love watching you play today. That's it. Number two, don't discuss athletic expenses. Your child has enough to focus on when it comes to their performance. Money and costs should not be one of them because then they validate your love for them with how much money you spend on them. I spent this much money on lessons and practice and travel and all this stuff, and you should be better. Now, anytime they struggle, they think you don't love them. And that's gonna take that child, they're gonna take that, that thought with them forever. Maybe that's not how you intended it to be, but that's how they're gonna perceive it. Now, there's a different sort of conversation now if you're a single parent, and you're discussing with your child what you have the means to actually pay for and how invested they are, then that's an honest conversation with you and your child. Hey, we have enough for this, this, and this. What do you want most? Because this is what I can offer you. As a single parent, I'm doing the best I can. Here's what I can offer you. Now, if you're just discussing athletic expenses in a way that is supposed to like motivate your child or tell them how much you're paying so they should play better, none of that is gonna make them play better. It's gonna tighten them up. It's gonna hurt them. Uh, emotionally, and it's going to tie their identity and their value to their performance, which we all know is not good. So avoid, not avoid, don't discuss athletic expenses with your child. That's what your wife or your partner is for. Know what you're div- and you're investing your money in and knowing that you're doing it simply because your child loves to do it. When my mom and dad were investing in lessons and travel ball for me, they did it only because I told them that I loved baseball. There was no other incentive for them. They were not trying to get me a scholarship. They were not trying to do this or that. Now, later on in my baseball career, when we knew getting a scholarship was possible, yeah, there was a goal, but that was a goal for our whole family. My parents invested in lessons for me because they knew that I loved baseball and there was no other ulterior motive. It wasn't I had to do this, 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 and this to get this. It was like, oh, you love playing baseball? Okay, we're gonna try to help you be the best you can. Here's a hitting coach, whatever the case may be. And so that's how it needs to be. You love this thing? Okay, let's get you more of it. Not I'm doing this for you so you have to perform, especially when they're very, 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 very young. So that's number two. Um, Number three in the don't category is overemphasize success. Success should be a part of the equation, but not all of it. Talk about what leads to success instead. In a mental performance mind frame, we're thinking about the process over the outcome. You wanna fall in love with the effort. You wanna fall in love with the journey. You wanna fall in love with just doing the actual thing. And then success becomes a byproduct of that. So we'll get to this on the do side, but do not overemphasize results and success because that's not what's gonna motivate 
our children to want to continue doing the thing they're doing because we know that youth sports and sports in general teach the most valuable lessons that a person can learn that we're going to help them in the rest of their life because very few of our children will even play high school sports or play division one sports or any college sports let alone professional sports but we want to keep them in sports as long as possible to learn about these things that are important teamwork respect hard work effort showing up day in and day out regardless of how you feel all of those things. So if we overemphasize success, we're underemphasizing all of the most important things that we can gain from sports. So as a parent or a guardian or a coach, you're emphasizing the process, the journey, just doing the thing because you love doing the thing. Okay. Next one. Number four on the don't side, don't catastrophize. Things are rarely always and never. This is also true for your athlete. Help yourself and your athlete to frame events in a proper context. You always strike out with the bases loaded. You never get a hit when you need to. Those are absolutely untrue. And maybe your child is six or seven or eight or nine and they're barely starting their sport. So it might technically be true because they haven't been playing the game long enough. There's just absolutely no reason to catastrophize or tell your child that about their performance, especially at those lower levels where it's, it's like there's zero consequences you're going out there just to have fun and that leaves a lot of parents because they get too competitive about such things at a young age we have to the emphasis should be on development learning the skills and having fun with your friends and creating great relationships and all of that becomes a byproduct of oh i really love baseball and i want to try harder or i really love soccer now because i made all these great friends and i learned new skills and now i want to i want to do it a little bit more and a little bit harder okay great and so there's a development there. There's a process of learning to love something. And if you're catastrophizing it in a way after every game, after every practice about always and never, your child is never going to see the little progress or the little steps that he's making. And we get blinded by those little pro progressive steps, by the glaring sort of mistakes. And we're all going to make mistakes. We make mistakes all the time, especially in an athletic environment. That's why it's so amazing that teaches us about life because we make mistakes in life all the time. I do all the time on this podcast, uh, in my relationship with my friends, like in my business all the time. But I learn from sports that I can learn from those mistakes, that I can get back, that I can iterate, that I can learn, that I can grow and that I can move forward knowing this new information because mistakes are just, you know, costumed uh, learning lessons. That's all they are. And if we can teach our kids that early on so we don't catastrophize, we just say, okay, what, what, what might have you learned from that? Okay, how did you feel? Do you feel a lot of pressure in that situation? Okay, how can we use our maybe our deep breath to understand that moment a little bit more? How can we learn from that, that mistake? How can we learn from that instead of catastrophizing the situation? Then later in life, when they get to college or have a relationship, they, understand, they already have that skill inherently in them because they learned it at a young age. <clears throat> this is very similar to overemphasize success, the next one, but overval don't overvalue stats. There are many ways your athlete impacts the game. Some of them show up in the stat sheet. Some of them, uh, most important ones, never do. This is all about effort. That's why simply after the game, simply after the game, you're just telling them, man, I loved watching you play. You're not saying, oh, I can't believe you didn't get hits or wow, I can't, you're such a good hitter. You got three hits. You're overemphasizing certain parts of the game that they don't have control over, but they do have control over how much effort they put in. And if all you do is emphasize effort, 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 effort over everything, and then you congratulate them and acknowledge them when they give their effort. Wow. Do you think they're going to be motivated to continue doing that? Yeah. But if you overvalue stats. It's just the same thing about discussing athletic expenses. They're only going to think their value to you as your child or as your son or as your, um, as your daughter is that when they play well, you love them. When they play well, you love them. And when they don't play well, you don't love them. And we have to remove that. We have to get that out of youth sports because that's hindering children. It's ruining their mental health and it's ruining the overall atmosphere of what youth sports can really do to, to transform young people's lives. And so again, we're thinking about the process. We're thinking about effort. We're thinking about development. We're thinking about having fun. And we're always, always, always emphasizing that effort over anything else and thinking about the journey and thinking about falling in love with doing the thing and creating great relationships and learning valuable lessons. Not, oh, you have three home runs and Jimmy has four. What the fuck are you doing? Or overemphasizing success or overvaluing stats. What about, excuse me, what about all the intangible traits? 
intangible traits are what we want to develop as human beings. That's how we become the best version of ourselves. Because those skills translate to every single domain you're going to be in in your life. Because once again, your child most likely will not be a professional baseball player or professional athlete. But what they will be is a professional person in the world. And these skills that they learned in youth sports have so many differing uh, applications about that. And so if we can learn them young about learning from mistakes, teamwork, respect, cooperation, showing up when things are hard, earning the things that you get, all of these things that make life worth living, that make life meaningful, we learn them in sports. But we can't learn them if we overemphasize success and we overvalue stats. Okay, I mentioned this one before, but the last one is do not, do not belittle their coach in front of them. Whether you like it or not, coach needs to be the expert for your athlete. Don't make your coach or don't make your child choose between parent or coach. This is horrible, horrible, horrible part of youth sports. Now understand, some coaches are not great. Some coaches are not great. I understand that. But you can, you can take your child away from the team or you can allow them to learn from that bad coach about what it doesn't look like. But if every time you leave the game and all you do is tell your son or daughter how bad their coach is, that coach is now handicapped from actually teaching them the skills they're trying to teach. Allow them to work through it. You can talk to your wife or partner about whatever you want. You can talk shit about the coach all day long as long as your child does not hear it because he to them is a role model is an expert and someone they look up to. But if my mom and dad don't like them, I'm caught between people, my parents and this coach and I both like them and wanna to listen to them and what do I do? Uh, now I'm stuck. And so now you've handicapped not only the coach, but you've handicapped your child. So refrain from those activities. I talk to parents about this all the time. You expect your eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 year old child to be calm, cool and collected and control their emotions and handle things under pressure, but you cannot do the same. So how can you expect your child to do that? Understand that you are the adult. You are the adult and you have to line up your words and your actions. You want your child to do these things, you have to do them first. That's how I live my life as a coach. Again, I fall short of the mark all of the time. But when I'm at my best, my words and actions line up. I feel calm, cool, and collected, and that's how I want my players to act, and that's how my parents act, and my parents act the way they want their kids to act, and it's all this cohesive unit. But when things start to go awry, then this is where these things start to happen. And so as a parent, you cannot belittle your co their coach in front of them because it creates a bad atmosphere. It creates a harder time for the coach to teach them the things they want them to teach, whether about the game or about life, and it puts your child in a tough spot because they don't know who to trust. They don't know who to trust. So again, to quickly go over the don'ts. Don't turn the car right into a coffin. Don't discuss athletic expenses. Don't overemphasize success. Don't catastrophize. Don't overvalue stats. And don't belittle their coach in front of them. Sports parents, understand those and do the best you can at avoiding those things. Do the best you can. We're asking our athletes to do the best they can. Well, you have to do the best you can too because you are leading by example. Line up your words and your actions. Now let's go to the good stuff. Do, these are the things you should do and can do all of the time to make your athlete have the best sports experience possible. And we ask our coaches to do the same as well. So do, do emphasize the power of yet. Your athlete needs to know that they won't be the best overnight. Greatness is a constant work in progress. I can't figure this out yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not in the starting lineup yet. I can't bench 100 pounds yet. I can't consistently throw strikes yet. It's all emphasizing in the power of yet because that gives the power to your child that they know that they can get there. And if we're thinking about the process, the journey, following, falling in love with the thing, the power of yet will transform their life because we have to get realistic about what we're good at and what we're not good at. I'm not, I'm not where I want to be yet, but man, I have the power and the agency to make it happen through consistent practice, deliberate practice, doing things, everything, doing things every single day, getting 1% better, all of these amazing things that come with trying to be the best version of ourselves, whether that's on the field or off the field. So really emphasizing the power of yet. Number two on do's, do ask, 
open-ended questions. Give them room to express and explain what they think of their situation. So tell me what you thought about practice. This is after, this is after um, you said, I love watching you play, right? So now you've created an environment where you focus on effort, where you love talking about effort. That's all you talk about. You're praising effort, 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 effort. And then you ask them open-ended questions. So tell me what you thought about practice. Tell me what you thought about the game today. What went well in the game today? What do you think we can work on this week? How can we improve upon it? Well, better how? Well, better how? But tell me what you thought of practice. What did you crush today, dude? What did you do awesome at today? Great. What are the you know little couple things that maybe you want to work on this week? All right, great. I can't wait to help you work through those things. Open-ended questions. Open-ended questions. Those open-ended questions are also re-emphasizing the power of yet. Because what do they need to work on? This. Okay, we're not there yet, but we can get there for sure. And I got your back and I want to support you through that as a parent. Uh, number three in the do's, validate emotions. Your athlete is competitive. With that comes a lot of emotion. Let them know their emotions are valid and expected. Okay. Baseball specifically comes with a lot of frustration. I don't tell my players to not feel that frustration, accept that frustration, feel it in your body, understand the disappointment after a tough loss, feel that anger after striking out with the bases loaded, feel it, validate those emotions. Emotions are important, sports are about emotions, but now how do we channel, control, and maneuver those emotions to best help us go into the next play, okay? Because Bill Belichick said one time that if you live in the past, you die in the present. If you have, okay? Also, they say in AA, you got one foot in the past, one foot in the present, you're peeing on the future, which both of those sayings are just about being in the present moment. And if we're still wrapped in the previous emotion from the previous play or the previous game, that's gonna not allow us to be in the present moment. We talk about win a lot with my teams. Win is what's important now. So we're always thinking about that question. What's important now? What's important now? What's important now? What's important now? Let's be in the present moment. And so we have to validate those emotions as they come in, but not let them control us. And that's where neutral thinking comes in. Neutral thinking is an idea from Trevor Moad, who is a who's an amazing mental performance coach. He's no longer with us, but he left a, a beautiful legacy that uh, everyone cherishes in the sports world. And he talked about neutral thinking. Neutral thinking doesn't mean being an emotionless robot. It means accepting what happens. Okay, I'm I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I'm disappointed. That play sucked. That loss sucked. That tournament sucked. Whatever it is. But now I'm channeling that to get back to neutral thinking, so that I can be in the present moment. I can think about what's important now. Now we have positive and negative thinking as well, and we want to lean on positive thinking and positive self talk. And that positive self talk leads us into being neutral, unfazed still accepting and validating our emotions, but then allowing us to channel that so we can move forward in the best way possible to focus on the next play, the next pitch, or what's important now. That's number three. Number four on the do's category is boast about their effort. Oh baby, is this important? Let your, let your children catch you talking about their effort and hard work to others. It's a great way to highlight the positive behavior you love. Let's always, always, always talk about effort. We have to praise effort over outcomes. There are scientific studies that document that praising effort over outcomes will increase your child's performance. So if all you care about is increasing your child's performance on their field of play, then you will 100% only praise their effort because that gives them more motivation and more reinforcement to do the thing they set out to do. So boast about their effort all the time, after the game, in the middle of the game, to your friends and family, all the time. That's the only thing you're talking about because on the don't side, we're not overemphasizing success and we're not overvaluing stats, but what we're, we are doing, what we want to do is boast about their effort. We want to praise their effort, not about their outcomes or shaping their identity based on them being a good hitter or a bad hitter or pitcher or whatever. We're shaping them based on how much we praise their effort. Man, that's just like so powerful. Wow, dude, I saw you absolutely sprint out of the box today down first base. Amazing job. Way to hustle in and off the field every time. I saw you encouraging your teammates today. I saw you were the first one out of the dugout when your buddy scored. Heck yeah, great job. Heck yeah, great job. I love that type of effort and it's amazing to see you play so hard and play so tough. That's it. 
We're not talking about anything they did results-wise. doesn't matter if they went 0 for 4, if they, they struck out for the last 72 at-bats. You're still focusing on their effort because this is your child and you love them deeply. And we are trying to shape them into the most powerful, best versions of themselves when they become adults. That's what youth sports are about. That's what sports are about. And so we boost their effort. And so when they when they're internally trying to get motivated or more disciplined for something, that's how they get themselves going. Okay, I'm thinking about my effort. Success means giving my best effort. That's what I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna give my best effort, boom. Because I remember my parents and my coaches always, always, always praising my effort. And that's what I'm gonna go out and do, boom. Okay, two more do's and then we'll wrap the episode up. Uh, next do is highlight courage and bravery. These are two things that your athlete will need for the rest of their life. It's the best way to turn any loss into a win and foster a growth mindset. Going after anything hard, which is playing sports, allow or, or means that you're courageous and brave. And we don't get less scared. There's always gonna be fear, but we get more brave. And we should acknowledge the fact that our children are brave and courageous for stepping out on the field of play. Because there's a lot of scrutiny and there's a lot of pressure that comes with playing sports no matter what age. And so we should absolutely be highlighting their courage and bravery, their courage to get better, their courage to... their their courage to go out and try new things. They're brave to get better, brave to talk to new players and be on new teams. All of these things are paramount virtues and values that are just gonna shape the rest of their life. And so we're trying to highlight these important characteristics, these important character traits, rather than overemphasize on their identity as an athlete. We are trying to broaden that identity of thinking about their identity as their repeated beingness. How are they being? Well, they're being courageous and brave and honest and thoughtful and they're doing a lot of effort. Okay, I'm gonna praise those things because then they're gonna shape their identity through their values. And then we have first principles, we have core values. Then it's easier for our kids when they get into high school, college or beyond to lean into those values and lead with their values through their words and actions. So we're gonna highlight the values and characteristics that we love in them. Wow, you're trying really hard, that's amazing. You're brave to keep going out there. I love your courage, I love your tenacity, I love your resilience. You're so kind to your teammates, that's amazing. Those are things that we're trying to highlight because that has you foster a growth mindset and that's how you think about moving on from a loss faster but also being able to learn from that loss and then foster that growth mindset knowing that we can always get better, we can always improve, thinking about the Tom Brady insight of being the best at getting better. That has nothing to do with results, nothing to do with results. It has everything to do with what's in your control, your child's control, which is being the best at getting better. And that's the things that we're trying to highlight. That's the things we're trying to note. And my absolute favorite do, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, is this last one, which I'll end with. Do, I love watching you play. I love watching you compete. Does your athlete know that you love watching them play or compete? This is the number one thing, the number one thing you can tell your athlete after a competition. It's so simple, yet so powerful. Again, do not turn the car ride into a coffin. There's no debrief, you're not a military operation, okay? It's just your kid playing a thing that he loves, hopefully that he or she loves still. And you reinforce that effort, you reinforce that competitive spirit by just saying, wow, I loved watching you compete today or wow, I loved watching you play today. That's it. The conversation ends there. There doesn't need to be a this or that about this or about, oh my God, this hit, that play, your coach, this player, this play, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't matter. You wanna reinforce effort. You wanna reinforce loving the process and loving the thing. You wanna reinforce the values and the virtues that you want your kid to portray. And you wanna reinforce being a great teammate. And the only thing that needs to be said after a game to make sure your child absolutely knows that you loved watching them play because they're still looking for you for validation. They're young people and we can validate them. We can boast and praise about their effort. We can highlight their courage and bravery by simply saying one statement after their competition. Yo, dude, I loved watching you compete today. You know what? I loved watching you play today. So to go quickly go over the do's, emphasize the power of yet, ask open-ended questions, validate emotions, 
boast or praise about their effort over anything else. Highlight those positive virtues like courage and bravery. And after every competition or every practice, simply tell them, I love watching you play. I loved watching you compete. And that wraps up this episode on sports parents' do's and don'ts. Now, if you're a sports parent and you just listened to this and you want more, please reach out to me. I can help you talk through more stuff. I can talk to your athlete. I can talk to your coach. We can get this figured out because one of my missions in life is to help transform youth youth sports to be the best thing possible for kids all around the United States. And I do that through this podcast and through my business, Champions Adjust, and through actually being on the field in the trenches with the kids every single day, every single weekend. So if you have more questions, please hit me up. But I hope this was informative. I hope you learned something. And most importantly, I hope you go apply it. Apply it into action, action, action as soon as possible. But thank you for your time and attention. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for tuning into that episode. And if you enjoyed it, click right here, right here for another full length episode of the podcast. And please don't forget to subscribe. But most importantly, most importantly, above all else, please, please take good care of yourselves and others. And I'll see you next time. Lots of love. Cheers.